As the novel coronavirus spread around the globe, the World Health Organization called on countries to act quickly. We have a simple message for all countries. Test, test, test. Testing is information. When you have testing, then you can know who is infected, who we need to take special care to keep isolated. It's the power of that information. There's been a range of responses depending on where you are in the world, with countries racing to identify as many cases as possible to slow the spread of this pandemic. There are two important tests, one that can confirm if you're currently infected, another that can tell if you're immune, and both are critical for our collective recovery. After pneumonia cases started to rise in Wuhan, researchers in China worked quickly to identify the virus, sequence it, and publish its genome. Shortly after, a team in Germany designed the world's first COVID-19 diagnostic test. This is a polymerase chain reaction test, nothing special, standard procedure in labs. The special thing about this is that there is an essential ingredient, a molecule that we provide. So we just ship this via a postal envelope to laboratories. A polymerase chain reaction test, or PCR, is a standard molecular biology technique that scientists have been using for decades. HIV would be one of the very first diseases where it left the research lab and became widely used so that scientists could figure out what the genetics are of different viruses. You know, my lab is a T-cell lab, so the tools that we use to look at T-cell responses against HIV are completely applicable to studying any virus. Many of my friends, colleagues uh, around the country are, are also virologists or immunologists. Many of them also have immediately made the shift over to COVID-19. It's plug and play, that infrastructure is there and we can just start looking at COVID-19. To find out if you have this virus, a doctor will give you a RT-PCR test or a reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. It's a molecular photocopying technique that can detect the presence of a virus's genetic material in a sample. To understand how that works, let's take a closer look at this coronavirus. It has a protein shell in these characteristic spikes. Inside the shell is its genome, a single RNA strand instead of a double helix. It's like the virus's instruction manual that it uses to take over a human cell. A RT-PCR test uses chemicals and a special enzyme to convert that RNA into DNA and then make billions of copies of it to confirm if there's an infection. And it all starts with an awkward swab. All of the current tests involve a nasal pharyngeal swab. So that is a very long swab that's inserted through the nose and is pushed all the way back to the sinuses. It looks horrible, yeah. You, you really want to get back there to the areas where the virus is replicating, so it, it replicates on respiratory mucosal surfaces. It, it likes the back and all the way down into the lungs. And then all the mucus and cells from that swab are then lysed in a detergent, so they're, they're broken up, and then the RNA that's in there is extracted. The RNA is turned into DNA with an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, and that's because the PCR test requires DNA. It can't be run directly in RNA. And then once we have that DNA made from what's in the swab, then PCR is done. So PCR basically is done by adding other bits of DNA that would bind to viral DNA. And then there's what's called a polymerase chain reaction where more copies are made if they are present. If the viral DNA is there, the PCR reaction will then amplify the viral DNA there, then it's a positive test. The World Health Organization published the protocols for the German team's PCR test and distributed over 1 million tests worldwide. South Korea, Singapore, Germany, and other countries responded quickly and deployed hundreds of thousands of diagnostic tests. Here in the United States, Unfortunately, our CDC did not even take kits that the WHO was providing, but decided they wanted to do it themselves, which is fine. But it's fine if they do it properly. If you look in the news reports, their kits were defective. They were far too few in volume. And so nobody had any test kits. And in the meantime, policies prevented others from developing tests. We have a very large infrastructure of private companies and university labs that all 
can do this. It's, it is not complicated. It is not difficult. The CDC now has loosened up and is allowing individual labs to now get testing going in-house with their own protocols. But the problem is those protocols have to follow exactly the CDC version. This PCR test is important for detecting current infections, but only for a specific window of time. Because once you start to recover, your immune system will clear the virus out. Somebody had a mild case and they recover, we have no way of knowing whether it was COVID-19 or not. But if we have an antibody test, we can actually find those people. It's also called a serological test, and it looks for the presence of antibodies in a blood sample. This would help experts track the full scale and spread of the virus and confirm who is currently immune. The antibodies play a very important role in immunity against a lot of viruses. They can basically kill the virus by interfering with its ability to infect the cell because it's physically blocking. We harness that because we have good technologies to figure out whether somebody has antibodies. The antibody test uses a diagnostic technique called an ELISA enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Inside the wells in this plate are tiny pieces of the virus. When a patient's blood is added, any coronavirus-fighting antibodies present will bind to those pieces. Specialized enzymes and substrates are then added, which change the color of the well if bound antibodies are present. Antibody tests are currently being used in Singapore and China, with other countries racing behind them to bring their own online and considering immunity certificate plans. This is an important test that could find asymptomatic carriers, clarify who's safe to work on the front lines, help with future treatments, and could be a key indicator for when we can re-enter society. But this test is not a quick fix. We don't know yet if testing positive for antibodies means a patient is fully immune to the virus. Researchers are moving fast here, but there's only been so much time to study COVID-19. The harder part is finding blood from people who have had coronavirus who have recovered because antibodies are made in the course of disease. And so if you're actually acutely ill, you probably won't have antibodies yet. We are looking for people that have recovered. You know, anyone out there that's interested, please contact me. All of this is in the works and it's going through much more quickly than usual because everybody does feel a sense of urgency. So people have really been kind of heroic and stepping up. And I think to those of us that have been around for a while, you know, it's a bit reminiscent of the AIDS epidemic. People are confused. There's a lot of misinformation. People are, are trying drastic things. But, but what I hope is that out of it will come really good useful treatments for vaccines, just like HIV treatments came relatively quickly and amazingly effectively.